What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host that got a really cool Super Saiyan Teen Gohan action figure thing that was like 10 bucks and I'm so happy with my purchase, it looks so good. Zack and today's subreddit is r slash malicious compliance. This story is called, Malicious Compliance for a Math Teacher Who Failed Me the Year Before, aka the last time he asked me to show more work. This story is kind of long because the malicious compliance was the result of over a year of frustration and anger, and the effects are still present 10 plus years later. I was your typical obnoxious teen my freshman year of high school. I was smart but had an unstable home life that contributed to my poor decision making. Despite my lack of learning and hard work, I had always, barely, passed my classes. My first year in high school, I had math for my first period. I enjoyed math but frustrated my teacher by rarely doing my work and even less frequently showing my work. As the year progressed, I fell behind like I did in every class. The second half of the year started and I fell further behind in class and more annoyed with my math teacher. I would typically submit about 10% of each assignment and expect about 10% credit. But because I did not show enough work, he would dock me down to 5%. Despite always being polite, I may have been a sucky student, but I couldn't stand disruptive or impolite students. My feelings toward him were obvious, and when I tried to talk to him about my assignments, it was clear he was also annoyed with me. About three months before the end of the year, my sister developed senioritis which affected me because she was my ride to school. For those who don't know, senioritis is when senior students know they are done with high school. Either they know they are going to pass their classes or they've been accepted to a college, etc. So they stop caring. Instead of being good students, they decide to do the bare minimum because at this point, nothing in high school really matters. So she started ditching, resulting in me ditching. Initially, I opposed it, but as my frustration with my math teacher increased, so did my absences. Towards the end of the year, I thought I had time to catch up when my teacher ended up reaching his limit. He was frustrated with me and my absences and lack of work that when I was so behind, I had no hope of passing. He got me removed from the class for the remainder of the year. I ended up in study hall or detention for the last three weeks. I had to repeat the course the following year instead of over summer school because it was an honors class. This resulted in me having a weird schedule because classes were only offered during certain periods for certain grades and I was a sophomore with freshman classes. I might have also failed honor science. Despite knowing those restrictions, both me and my math teacher were surprised to find that I was placed in his class for the second year in a row. Both of us tried to have me transferred out of his class, but for me to graduate on time, there were no other options. The humiliation of my previous year was enough to make me incredibly motivated. I was determined to do well enough that even if he hated me, he could not have me removed again. I made sure to do every problem for every assignment and turn them in on time. Despite all my effort, my grades were mediocre. My teacher only gave one point for the correct answer, but typically five to seven points for work and he marked me down all the time. I talked to him argued that I showed enough work for him to follow. But no matter what I tried, all he would do was tell me to show more work. A large part of the reason I hated showing work was because I had terrible handwriting. I previously went to a school that required all of our writing to be done in cursive. So I spent years only writing in cursive. I actually enjoyed writing in cursive and my cursive is beautiful. When we moved from my dad's job, my new school district gave cursive assignments automatic zeros because they were too hard to read. So after years of writing in cursive, assuming I'd never need to print again, I now had to print everything and my handwriting never recovered. 
As a result, to submit legible assignments, I try to write as little as possible. My handwriting is still ugly. After my grade on the first test did not match what I felt I earned, my frustration grew into outright hostility. It seemed that no amount of hard work would get me a good grade. I finally decided that if I was going to be miserable, I would make my teacher miserable too. After trying to spare him the atrocity that was my handwriting, I finally decided to comply. If he wanted to see more of my work, I would show him all the work. No more would I need to remove confusing and ugly work. No longer would I erase incorrect attempts scribbled across the page because my handwriting was so bad I couldn't write straight. No longer would I rewrite only the relevant work in easy-to-follow columns. I would write so much work, it would be obscene. I started writing out every single possible step, one by one with labels. If I messed up, I would leave it and rewrite it somewhere else. On every worksheet, I would run out of the allotted room and cram my remaining work into the margins because he did not believe in scrap paper. My assignments went from a few formulas and legible bits of work to cluttered nightmares. Every bit of white space was filled, often spilling onto the back of the paper because there was not any room left. Homework assignments went from being 2 to 3 pages to 10 to 15 pages, sometimes more. All my assignments were just pages and pages of nearly illegible, ugly, chaotic work. I figured it would take a month of this before he broke and asked me to write less because reading and grading it was such a chore. About three weeks in, I got my first assignment back. It was higher than any other grade I had received in his class. I was a little shocked, but he figured he did not have time to be annoyed yet. During the following week, all the assignments I received were scored similarly. Then he finished grading the second test and asked me to come talk to him about my grade. I was preparing my speech about malicious compliance as I sat down in the chair by his desk, but decided to wait for him to speak first. He handed me my test. It was covered in chaotic work, equations, and letters all over. At the top was 100%. I was stunned into silence. I had never gotten a perfect score on a real test before. My teacher began to talk to me about how impressed he had been with my work lately. He pointed out how even though my work was chaotic, it showed my thought process. He also pointed out some of the times where I caught my own mistakes mid-problem and corrected myself and how on previous assignments, I had been doing the same thing. He talked about how before, I wrote so little that I typically never recovered once I made a mistake. He told me this is why he did not allow scrap paper. He wanted us to be able to see our mistakes and work as we progressed through our problems. I sat in the chair in shock. I had sat in that chair many times previously, typically to try and debate with him over my scores. I also sat in that chair when he told me half a year prior that I had no hope for passing his class. I sat in the chair of someone I had despised for over a year as he complimented me and told me that he always knew I was capable and he struggled to watch me fail. He talked about how happy he was to see my progress and basically that he knew I would do well once I stopped making stupid mistakes. I wrote down all the steps to annoy my teacher and prove him wrong and learned instead that I was being a bad student. I learned it is easy to make a simple mistake that can lead to the wrong answer. But when you see your work, it helps you think clearly and catch simple mistakes. By the end of the year, I had one of the highest grades in the class. Home life was still crap. And when we did group work, many people wanted to work with me. The math teacher and I became friends. I learned he lived in my neighborhood and would visit him sometimes when I came back to town years later. 
and he ended up as my favorite teacher of all time. I'm in my last semester of college. Took 10 years because life is crazy. And after this semester, I will graduate as an engineer. I have used this lesson every day for every assignment and would never had made it had I not tried to punish my teacher with malicious compliance. Wow, that was actually unexpectedly wholesome. That was a really creative way to tell the story. Like, OP took us through their mindset throughout the, the two years that he was in that class. And that was really good because it just caused us to not be able to predict the outcome. And it just goes to show that not everyone is out to get you. Some people really, really want you to do better, so that's why they're hard on you. And it's really nice to see people having a lasting relationship with their teacher. Because, as you know, I'm a big fan of teachers. This story's called, Mom Told Me To Leave, So I Did. Law enforcement got involved and she lost everything. Wow. This happened when I was 15. My mom was, let's be real, she probably still is, a mentally, emotionally, and physically bad person narcissist. Some highlights are when she was teaching my twin sister and I to read at the age of four or so. It was around 2 a.m. and my sister was having trouble learning, so my mother's solution was to beat her with a sandal every time she got a flashcard wrong. Same thing happened when my mother had me transcribe an essay she had written to my handwriting when I was seven. Every time I started a letter from the wrong position, like starting a capital M from the bottom line, she would beat me with one of her Birkenstocks. This too happened later at night, so when I got too delirious from the exhaustion and pain, she would drag me by the neck and literally throw me into a cold shower to wake me up so we could more easily continue the waking nightmare. When I was 13, I told her I wanted to live with my dad. They were divorced, and she told me she didn't care what I did after I turned 18. I later figured out that this was because the child support stopped at 18. Anywho, fast forward to age 15. Our relationship was understandably strained. We had had guests and she liked to use guests as a way of controlling our behavior through shame. It's easier to be an angsty teenager when your grown up friends from church aren't watching and judging everything you do. This made it easier for her to pretend to be a firm but loving mother all while slipping in sideways comments like velvet daggers. Well, I decided I wasn't going to subject myself to the whole thing and spent the day outside in the woods nearby. We lived in the mountains at the time so it was less than 100 feet from the house. When I saw our guest had left, I went to go back inside. My mother, perhaps unhappy at being denied a day-long emotional uh, mistreatment routine, told me I wasn't welcome and that I should leave. My 15-year-old brain heard her words and knew that she only meant for a little while, but it also recognized that failure to specify any time frame at all. So I hiked a couple miles to my friend's house and asked if I could spend a couple days there. When my friend's dad found out that I was there and why, he was pissed and said I could stay as long as I needed. I didn't go home that evening, or the next. My mom became concerned and contacted law enforcement to report me missing. This is a big deal for several reasons. We lived in the mountains on a national park. So it was a very real possibility that I had been attacked by a wild animal, become injured while hiking, drowned, or been kidnapped. Nobody knew of my mother's cruel treatment tendencies or the squalor and neglect my sister and I lived in. Most importantly, the law enforcement was the local park rangers with which she worked daily. Law enforcement immediately contacted my dad's side of the family to see if I had turned up there or contacted them. They promptly freaked the flip out and came to my house with lawyers on standby. Law enforcement then hired dogs to track my scent and everyone freaked out because the dogs tracked me to a nearby river where my trail died because the dogs couldn't pick up any more scent. 
Over the next couple of days, there were people going in and out of my house. Rangers, lawyers, my family, etc. And several noticed the overpowering scent of cleaning chemicals. But only the lawyer considered why a clean house would reek of chemicals. Law enforcement started to canvass the nearby woods and neighborhood. My friend's dad came to me and asked if there was somewhere else I could stay. He told me that he wouldn't kick me out and didn't want to have to lie to the police or let the dogs onto his property. My friend and I figured we could just go camping for a week or so, but instead, I looked up my dad's side of the family and called and they picked me up right away. Understandably, everyone had questions. When I told them what was happening, the lawyers, horrified, pounced. A judge issued an emergency change of custody and prevented her from gaining custody until she underwent psych eval and therapy, which my mother would never allow. The rangers, equally horrified, completely shunned my mother and she eventually lost her job. Since she was only allowed to live on the park because she worked there, she was kicked out of her house. My friend's father and the trackers were members of the local community and churches and they too shunned my mother. She lost her job, her house, her church, and her friends, all because she told me to leave and I did. Edits for clarity. I'm 32 now, this happened a while ago. Edits. I wasn't clear and didn't want to make it any longer. When my dad's family got involved, they were able to reach an agreement where I would live with them for a time, but my sister stayed. I had to go back to my mom's for a short while, but the judges issued an emergency change of custody and my sister and I went to live with our dad. My sister and I have been in therapy and she is teaching now. Life isn't perfect, but it is better. Edit. People keep asking about the chemicals. The house was normally trashed. My mother kept an untrained dog and the carpet was soaked with dog feces and urine. The few times we had guests, we would have to crawl around the dog's potty spot and clean it up and make the house smell good. My mom freaked out when she realized that rangers and CPS might come around. She did a deep clean of the house before reporting me missing because she couldn't afford to have them realize what they were walking on. Dear God, that's disgusting. Well, their mother definitely was not fit to be a mother because, wow, that sounds horrible. I'm glad everything eventually got better and worked out in the end. The power of malicious compliance knows no bounds. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.